Hello YouTube! I am Penstar, and this is Surviving Mars Strategy and Tactics, Episode 7. So, in our last episode, we pretty much put the, uh, the final cherry on top of our first perfect dome. Um, so we're done, right? No. <laughs> No. Despite what some may say out there, you cannot run a self-sustaining colony uh, um, in a single small dome. You do not have the room for it. The only way I could see someone uh, uh, swinging that is if you were the oligarch and you had the um, this in here and you had not lots of water and rare minerals uh, all together. But no, no, we're not going to make all those assumptions. You need a second dome to uh, get your colony really, really fully sustained. Uh, so that being said, that is going to be the thrust of our next few episodes here. But before we get uh, break ground on that, uh, we, uh, we we a couple adjustments that I need to point out. Uh, first off, I do want to point out a bit of a uh, uh, an oopsie I made at the uh, well, a couple of episodes ago. So when we built actually last episode, when we built our polymer factory, just uh, me as a force of habit turned on the whip uh, for the uh, day shifts here, just like everything else. However. You do not want to do this. Not for your outdoor buildings. Let me show you why. Let's take a look at uh, Stina Lind here. Ooh, look at that sanity. Isn't that kind of low? Let's see why this is low. Um, so yeah, heavy workload, plus, minus 10, and worked outside the dome, minus 10. Uh, she's been taking a lot more sanity damage than she is getting back in uh, sanity restoration due to well-rested and visiting the infirmary. Um, and if we kept this up, she would eventually snap and stop working. Yeah, until you get some technologies that will improve your, um, your uh, colonist sanity, sanity regeneration or prevent sanity degradation, uh, do not whip your outdoor workers. It's just, it, just don't. And don't work them on a third shift because that has the same effect. Uh, another thing that I noticed here is we have a bit too many wind turbines here. And now you might say, well, Pinstar, isn't that really useful? I mean, what about, what about cold snaps? Well, yes, but we're going to be working on a way to sort of circumvent that. We can, we can re, we can re up them if we need to. Um, but for the moment, for the moment, I think we've overbuilt a little bit. Uh, so we want to take, uh, take down a couple of these, um, now, when you are um, uh, nuking stuff, uh, the other thing is I haven't applied any of my uh, any of my polymer blades, and it's better to have fewer windmills with polymer blades than it is to have more without, uh, because polymer blades do not increase the maintenance. Now, when you're looking for things to destroy, and you have your choice between a number of things, look for the things that are lowest on maintenance. Like this thing's about to be fixed but not if we set it for destruction. That way we don't have to waste that part. This one over here, also about to break. Let's pop it. This one, this one's fine. No need to pop this one. This one is, is got plenty of life in it. Um, this one on the other hand, yeah, we gotta pop this one. And that's about all we need to really trim. We don't wanna go crazy because then we'll be doing some self-induced power issues. Uh, and that won't be any fun. Um, right then. Uh, another thing I noticed here, I still have some old uh, lines coming out here uh, from my old uh, things uh, here. Um, before I, I was uh, questioning whether or not you needed the um, um, decommission protocol in order to get rid of wirings, you don't actually. It's just kind of unintuitive how you do it. Uh, what you do is you go to this front menu right here, the uh, infrastructure, you go to salvage, and you just click on the cable, and it just boop, 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 and boop, and boop. And that will reduce the chance of cable faults popping, because, uh, well, we certainly don't want those. Uh, another thing I've uh, neglected here before we uh, unpause here is we got to set our uh, transport rover to, well, start working again. 
Um, and for what we need here, we actually need some more polymers. And I noticed we had a little deposit of polymers up here. Now, polymers found in the wild like this are very few in number. You're not going to get the giant blocks of like 50 or so of uh, like you will with metals. Uh, but still, seven polymers um, will help us uh, in, in, increase our velocity here. Uh, and yeah, we, we, uh, I think we harvested up a small meteor uh, before. That's why we have six metals sitting there. So it'll have enough room for the seven polymers and then bring them both back. All right. Now, we do need to get more people. But our dome, well, I mean, there's more housing. There's, there's 10 slots of housing, as you can see from vacant residential slots here. We could technically get another rocket and cram more people in there and then as soon as the baby is born then we got overpopulation no 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 time to start a new dome and more importantly it's time to start a new dome for getting a resource well two resources uh that we do not yet have the means to produce one is money and two is electronic parts now we're running a little bit low on electronic parts right now just just a touch uh, so we're kind of racing against the clock, so we have to be quick about getting um, electronics. Now, we don't have much money. We could buy ourselves some electronics right now, but I want to get the means of production first. So I think we're going to try and coast out our electronics and, to, and get our, uh, our rare metals money-making set up first. Uh, and then we can uh, transition into making our own electronics and that will make us even more self-sustaining. Right then, let's plan things out. Basic dome. Now, unfortunately, this dome, I believe, is going to be a little bit too, uh, too far um, from our... Uh, so we can do it. Well, no, we gotta make sure we gotta make sure that we're at least within clo clo close enough range to this. It does not actually have to encapsulate the the deposit itself, um, as long as it's close enough. Like like this should be fine. Actually, hang on. Let me just scooch it a smidge a meter out this way. Like say like like. This. this should be good. There we go. Um, and the reason is I'm going to be showing you a, sort of an update to my um, my circle of life design that I did for original dome. I'm not going to go crazy demolishing what we have there, but I do want to show you some updates for uh, for it to make it a little bit well, more efficient, more reliable, and less material intensive. Um, so what we do need to do is we, we one thing we do need to think about is how are we going to get water to this dome now we could save up uh, our we could wait a day for our celebrity to give us another 10 million and then go shopping and, and send a rocket just to get one more moisture evaporator but uh that's not we're, we're gonna lose a lot of time and like i said we're on the clock right now so we're actually gonna borrow some water from up here we actually have quite a bit of surplus water here. Um, hourly production, 7.5. Total demand, uh, 4.6. Plenty of water to go around. So we're going to make do some long distance transportation. But we are got to be smart about it because just flat out doing a long pipe will create honey bunches of leaks. And we don't want that. We don't want that at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to, well, we're going to start by drawing a... Uh, nice long pipe here like that now when it comes to um, when it comes to um, our little prongs here we do still need the same level of redundancies for our new dome as we have the old one um, however we're not going to completely encircle the uh, the dome itself what we're going to do is we're going to take our pipes and at each of the three nodes, obviously this one is already drawn, but at each of the three nodes, we're going to draw this out five spaces, which is exactly one metal's worth. Five spaces. Yeah, good enough. Five. Not as pretty, but it'll work. 
Uh, and then we do the same exact thing for power. Now, again, this one's going to be a little bit of an exception um, because. that hooked into there that way we can sort of piggyback off of this power that we already have and now you know now that we already have three solar panels um it's kind of time for us to uh lay down a few more yeah since this thing isn't uh, polluting anymore we don't have to worry too much about it so that'll give us our proper six to one battery ratio uh, we are going to need a little bit more power for this, but we can do that with wind. Um, and just like with before, we can get power cables out here um, and do more do more goodies on this end here and power cable on this side too. Um, now, when we're setting up our redundancies here, we are going to do we're, we are going to do the same thing where we have a water tower at each of these. Just to spread them out and give ourselves redundant protection, we want an oxygen tank at all three of these. Beautiful. All right. Um, now, as far as we do want a moxie, because uh, we don't necessarily want to depend on the oxygen flowing through there. And these things are cheap, easy to maintain, and don't eat a lot of power. So I will not begrudge a moxie uh, going in here. So we'll slap, slap one down here. Uh, now, we are, those, kind of the whole reason for us building all the way down here is we are going to want a uh, rare metals extractor. Um, it does take maintenance though, so we're gonna we're gonna want to place this, but we're gonna want to turn off the construction until right before we're ready. Yeah, actually, right here will be fine. Perfect. All right. Um, now, yes, we do want to get a few more uh, bits of power. Since this area is kind of busy, this area is going to be kind of polluted. I think it would be wisest to put our uh, wind turbines over here. We're only going to put down three of them. Again, we don't want to go crazy because um, saving on maintenance is ideal. All right. Um, I think we're about ready to finally unpause 13 minutes into the video here. <laughs> Um, but again, all, all things that are important designations to note, uh, and things that we needed to do to, uh, well, improve our chances, let's just say. Oh, and actually I forgot, uh, despite the, uh, the contamination risk, we do want the water tower to be closer to our thing here because we're going to get another defroster over here. So all our drones are going to be doing... Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you. I knew I was forgetting something before I unpaused. So we got to get all this set up, and we got to get it set up relatively quickly. Uh, but unfortunately, our drone hub only has six drones to its name. Um, now, our other drone hub here has 19 of them, and you might say, oh boy, here we go. We're just going to, you know, cherry pick one, click on it, move it, click on it, move it, click on it, move it. Ah, ah. There's an easier way to do this. Watch. So what you want to do here is this right here, dismantle drone. This might seem like a bad idea cuz like yeah, we don't want to we don't want to take apart our drones. It's they're kind of they're kind of important. Uh, and you're right, they are. But what this does is this turns them essentially into prefab drones. Um, that you can then reassemble elsewhere without any resource cost. So let's uh, strip this down to oh, let's say 7. Uh, and then we can construct drones. See all those available drone prefabs? Boom. And look, they just teleported over here. Now all those drones just got assembled and came swarming over here and they're ready to rock and roll. 
Now, uh, one other thing to note here, we are working on utility crops and that is a good thing to do because one, one of the, in addition to expanding our resource production, we do need to expand our food production to make up for that. However, core rare metals, while rare metals are what we're after, we already have a surface deposit spoken for. So we don't need core rare metals yet. Uh, what we do need, however, is extractor amplification. Uh, this will make our um, mine produce a lot faster. And along the same line, factory amplification, which does the exact same thing, trades a 25% increase of production uh, for our factory uh, uh, here, uh, for our factories, which will be useful. One last thing, and I can't believe I forgot this, is we gotta go call for some colonists. Yes, I know, we're just now breaking ground on the dome. That doesn't matter. We gotta get them sent here now. Now, as far as who we're getting, we, um, we don't need uh, botanists. What we do want is geologists. And thankfully, we've got enough of them floating around that we can actually make do. Uh, our pool is still pretty darn narrow at 64 people, but we can still make that work for us. Um, alternate, we also are going to want engineers. We are going to want scientists. Uh, we do want medics if they're available. We don't need security and we don't want no specializations. We don't need no specializations. All right. Um... Now we need a minimum of eight, eight scientists, or eight geologists, rather. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, Seven, eight. Oh, what the hey, nine. Uh, we do want our we do want our engineer, the one engineer that's available, and then we can take a couple of scientists uh, of uh, that that are actually good traits. Uh, gambler, fit, vegan. Eh. What else we got? Ner plain nerd is fine. Um, enthusiast, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let's launch. Uh, and yes, launch anyway. We're, we're bringing everybody. Because, yeah, I know. It's not going to this dome. It's going to this one down here. All right. They are on the way. Our drones are busy doing their thing. And now we're going to add the things that uh, we're, we need to manage this big, long pipeline. And that is, my friends, pipe valves. One right here. And one right here. This will not only split the pipeway into different segments. Oh, please tell me they can actually... All right, good. I was about to say, like, you guys better be able to reach that. Um, this will split that up for the purposes of, um, of uh, considering them one thing of pipe. And if there's a leak along here, we can shut off both valves and starve the leak so we don't actually lose any water. But in the meantime, we can keep the valve open and that keeps everything else open. Uh, we're gonna wanna put the, uh, put the priority Resources are low. Yeah, I know polymers are low. Quit your whining. Please finish this, uh, this tank up so we can start filling. There we go, increasing by 0.9 per hour, beautiful. And yeah, you guys are just uh, swarming here. Eating up all the concrete we've been mining, but that's kind of what it's there for, so no complaints. our transport with our polymers. Let's see. You are idle. You're also in need of 
recharging your power. Go recharge. And hopefully those polymers will help uh, help uh, the dome itself get constructed nice and quickly. Yeah, this thing's a little bit on the more expensive. Oh yeah, we need some more. Um, we need more uh, recharge stations here. We get one down here. Um, I like to build these in sets of fives. Uh, granted, scattered around in sets of fives, but sets of fives nonetheless. Three right there, because that's probably going to be a high water mark. Um, and then we can sneak one right over there. Because that way, five of them, each of them takes up 0.2 power. Uh, so that way, the five of them just use a, a single even point of power, which makes things easier. Easier to manage. Now, as far as our food goes here, um, our, uh, our farm just produced and uh, we've got ourselves uh, working on some wheat. Now, the reason I chose wheat is because specifically we're working on these utility crops. I just need a crop to be growing to sort of bide our time. It's not our, uh, um, it's not really our, our, our place to, uh, um, you know, we don't want them to be idle. Uh, but what we sector scan we do want is um, we do want their um, all right we got those up here all right let's get their houses built and yes I am gonna go with living quarters just because we're low on polymers at the moment uh, we can always un 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 break them apart and rebuild them. Uh, we're gonna go with the same sort of build here. We got the uh, grocer. Yeah, I know you guys are about to ready to land. We're not quite ready for you yet. Uh, we're working on it though. Oh, I never paused this, but well, we're almost ready for you anyway, so it's just as well. Guys, you guys gotta get your. Uh... You guys got to get more power before here, and you got to get your living quarters kind of built. That's no good otherwise. Now, the, you can actually keep them chilly in orbit for a little while, but not too long. See that? Passengers on board will die if the rocket doesn't land in 114 hours, uh, which is actually not that bad. I mean, that, that gives you a generous time. If you get unlucky with a uh, dust storm keeping your uh, ship in the air, um, they probably won't die there, but you can't just leave them there indefinitely. That being said, it would be foolish to land them now. So if they've got some supplies up in the ship, let them munch on those supplies. I don't actually think that makes them eat their, their freebie 10, 12 food. So this is just sort of free hang time for us um, while we wait and get all their stuff built. All right, I think I'm gonna land them now. And we'll land you right about here-ish. Because that way they can get to the dome, um, but they're, they're not too far from fuel. Oh, speaking of not too far from, let's get a universal depot over here. Um, and we want to bar the fuel resource. All right. Yeah. New colonists this have is arrived. The whole reason why we wanted to do this right away is we've got our eight geologists. Our colonists are suffocating. We only have a few hours to get them more oxygen uh, before they run out. Oh, I never turned it on. Our colonists. Are... Here, have some air, guys. <laughs> You're good, we're good. I just forgot to turn your dome on. Uh, let's see here, we've got, yeah, one, two. Yeah, food needs to be fooded. Whip, whip. 
Whip, whip. And we got food here already, so people can um, nom. But more importantly, we're working on, on this here. These, these uh, rare metals will be paramount to our survival here. Uh, we're down to two electronics and slowly dwindling due to maintenance. Maintenance that we can't really get around uh, because the things that are eating that up are our machine parts factory, um, our uh, research lab, which just repaired itself, thankfully, um, our drone hub here, which just repaired itself, a drone hub here, which is good. So we we actually have more hang time than than it looks like we have, which is why I think research I, complete. I think we can pull this off. All right, utility crops get. Uh, so which means we can schedule up a new crop here. Now the only thing that utility crops adds, at least in terms of uh, of our base farm here, are cover crops. Um, which is horrible yield, but it increases the soil quality by 40%. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, they're crap, that, but they still take uh, five souls to grow. But they will improve the long-term prospects for this farm very quickly. So after, and I mean, we're not going to waste the wheat. We might as well let them finish off their wheat crop. Uh, but after that... Oh yeah, we could probably get some decorate, decorative uh, goodies for them. Um, stone garden, small fountain. I won't begrudge a little bit of concrete-based decoration for frivolity purposes. And keep in mind, um, the reason why this little this little bit works here so well is that it. Um, the dome actually is a conductor for oxygen, power, and water. So water, excess water is coming in through here, but it's also distributing itself to these other tanks. So we're still getting three tanks worth of redundant protection, um, uh, despite uh, despite the uh, you know them not being connected by a circle. I didn't actually realize that. Uh, so this is the Circle of Life 2.0. All right, let's, um, oh, our transport's idle again. I'm, I'm bad at uh, keeping you busy, buddy. So let's just do an all right here and come on. Cable fault reported. Also with all of these being separate lines, the chances of them popping faults are minimal. I mean, they always can, but uh, it's, it's, it's as low as you can get without the breakthrough uh, that makes your cables immune to uh, having faults. All right, our drones are kind of bored right now, um, which is unfortunate, but actually, you know what? I have something for you guys to do. Sector scanned. Select a sector oh. to scan. I need to select a new sector. Hmm. All right, we just finished up here. Let's go, let's walk ourselves downwards. Right then, uh, fuel depot. Uh, you do not want to put fuel alongside other things, but I'm okay having fuel as its own thing. Uh, and kind of kept far away from things. So that way they can, uh, they can be nice and quick about, uh, about it. We do need to refuel Sharky, obviously, but one other important thing that we're doing right now is gathering exports. Um, mainly we're gathering the, ra the, the rare metals. And we actually don't want to send Sharky back up the minute uh, Sharky's full of fuel. We actually want to get pretty darn close to 30 things. We're going to need a lot of money for our next rocket. Uh, so let's speed things up. How are we doing on our amplification? Almost done. That will increase the rate that we get our money, uh, which is extremely important. Um, now, after that, and after the factory amplification, I think I'm going to circle around and teach you guys my uh, anti-cold wave um, uh, trick. Uh, one that, a trick that, that requires advanced technology to combat, but will generally nullify cold waves once you have it in place. And that involves sterling generators. I'll show you the best way to do that, uh, well, when, when the uh, research comes around. The other thing we could do is we can get 
transport optimization just to get our uh, transport rover working a little bit more efficiently. I'm not going to begrudge that since it's a level a tier one tech for only a thousand beakers, which is chump change for us. That's a day's worth of research, essentially. All right, how are you guys doing? You, um... Now, the one thing that has me a little bit nervous here is look at the ages. Yeah, we have a couple of children, Research complete. but we've got uh, 16 adults and 21 middle-aged. And yes, while babies are being born, I don't want them all to turn into uh, old fogies. All right, let's get that amplifier Cable fault reported. and let's get uh, this thing taken down. Ah, now one thing that um, they changed uh, recently, and this was a really good change here, is they made it so that you could build extractors, uh, concrete extractors, over depleted things. Now, they're not going to be able to access the materials for things that have already been used up, but what we can do is we can use that to, say, take another bite out of our original concrete deposit. Uh, which, you know, we do want to always have a constant concrete info income here. But see how see how we can now yeah see now we, now we can access 163 despite this is despite this over overlapping all of this yeah 163 is worth uh, slapping one of these guys down huh, maybe I shouldn't have uh, demolished that cable but that way we can have without having to go searching for concrete um, aggr too aggressively. We can uh, we can get ourselves continued concrete um, income. We will eventually need to build downwards down here, but I think that's a natural progression anyway. I mean, we've got we've got a uh, we've got a metal deposit uh, down here, which we will eventually want to be tapping into. Yeah, I know you're ready to leave, Sharky. I'm not ready for you to leave. You need resources you need to make us are low. More money is what you need to do. So hopefully this gets itself... Yep, you're amplified now. So now we're making 8.5 rare metals. Now this is this is costing us a bit more in the way of, uh, uh, of cash. Let's see, hourly production... Well, now that we've threw that amplifier on there, I think it would behoove us to put on the polymer blades just to uh, kick you guys up a notch and make sure we're not draining too much power. Yeah, you're charging nominally, but, you know, good enough. We'll want that in place for, uh, for in case of a cold wave anyway. Also, we're not going to place our... Um, our subsurface uh, warmer until we get notice of a cold wave. No reason to have it in there. As you can see, we have this one turned off because there's no reason to keep it running unless we have a cold wave coming. Cash, cash, cash. That's music to my ears. Uh, we will eventually want to build a drone hub down here, but I might actually research the drone hubs rather than buying the prefabs. I mean, uh, for for if you're going to buy something as a prefab, drone hubs aren't that bad. Uh, contrast that to, say, prefab sterling generators, which are schmuck bait. Do not buy prefab sterling generators. That's not to say that sterling generators are bad. They're just bad as a prefab. Um, if, you, if you research the tech to get them and build them Sector yourself... Sector scanned. Then, then, then we're in business. Then we're in business. But, um, yeah, that's that's kind of my reasoning behind that. All right, these guys are kind of bored here. So you know what? Let's uh, let's kick a few of you back up to your original home, so you guys can keep up. Because yeah, there's still food sitting here on the farm. Now, granted, the farm can hold 300 food. Uh, let's see. How much do you have? 20? I think we're going to go... Pipe leak reported. Uh -oh. Why the Sam Hecker? 
Oh, for F's sake! Oh, no! Uh, let's turn off this pipe valve. Yeah, you just kind of spawned right there. Yeah, no wonder there was a freaking pipe leak. I was about to say, it's like, I, my stuff hasn't deteriorated that quickly, has it? Yeah, no, no, that was, that was a, that was a twister that decided to say hi. Holy crap. Well, that was unfun. As I was saying, um, we, uh, we, we're, we're going to probably get a one more day's worth of production out of our rare metals extractor. Another 8.5 or so. That'll be close enough. Freaking windstorm. Eating up all of my materials. You better not have bullseye my... Alright, good. You didn't bullseye the, the drone thing and use up my, my precious electronics faster. Yeah, I know you guys are hemorrhaging... Uh, Water. Get on that drones, come on. Yeah, I turned off the valve so that we this these guys wouldn't hemorrhage water. I know. It see it, it, we have the no pipe connection uh, icon here. That's not me that doesn't mean these guys are go are going to die of thirst. They're still being supplied by the uh, by the pipes here. Uh, and then once those water, uh, once those leaky pipes are all fixed, then we can get the pipe valve going back in here. And get the water flowing. Okay, um, I think that's I think that's everything. Uh, we just need to wait for the drones to drop off our stuff. There's, Resources are low. There's that. Yeah, I know machine parts and I know electronics are low. That's okay. Sharky is taken off. Whee. But we're down to zero electronics. We're, we are literally out of electronics. Nothing that requires electronics can be repaired until we return. Well, but will we be able to return on time? Or will our drone hubs go dark and thus shut the rest of our colony down? We'll find out in the next episode. Uh, so if you like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya!